Uh, well, hello everybody. Uh, it's a great, uh, great pleasure to be with you uh, all and to be here with uh, and, uh, Professor Woods, Nairi Woods. She's the Dean of the Vavadnik School of Government at the University of Oxford and she spent uh, the last 24 hours in Spain uh, with us speaking in various uh, forums uh, about the weakening of democracy and the fracturing uh, of the international order. And I wanted just to ask you to share some of your thoughts and ideas that you've shared uh, with us over the past few days with the people watching this video. Mm -hmm. Well, good morning, and it's a pleasure to be here in Spain. Um, I, I think democracy is at risk of being weakened, but I don't think it will necessarily be weakened. But I think we have to all take the revolt against the establishment that's happening, not just in Spain, not just in Britain, not just in the United States, but across the whole world, in Brazil, in the Philippines, right across the world. We're seeing people whose lives have not been improving over the last decade, start to revolt against their governments and all establishment political parties. And that's because they're the first generation of people who feel that they've been stripped of their right to expect that their lives will improve. And so they're angry. Right. Right. And, uh, and of course, you connect that directly with the political economy of these processes, which is basically the rise of populism. Is that, is that sort of the logical connection of these processes that you see? I think that's right, and I think, so the solution has to lie partly in politics. Politics mm. has to become more diverse, more representative. Working people have to be able to look at representative politicians and say, yes, he or she is like me, they're likely to understand my problems, they're likely mm. to represent me. Mm. Um, political parties are gonna have to be much better at listening and connecting to communities that they, mm. that they purport to represent. And then on the economic side, we, we have to now think transformatively about an economics which is going to be a counterweight to the trajectory that we're on. So we're on a trajectory where the 1% are on an accelerating trend of getting more and more and more, and where working people's lives are becoming more precarious. Because if their wages increase, they'll be replaced with a robot. If their wages aren't increased, their lives will become more miserable. So right. this is a moment for, for all countries to seize and to think about what a transformative new economic plan would look like. And an important moment, I think, as well, and this is the, the last question, but for schools of international relations and schools of public policy that are in the business of training future leaders, both in the public sector but also the private sector, mm -hmm. to understand some of these trends, their implications, mm -hmm. their risks, uh, and trying to educate the next generation of leaders that are capable of managing these processes, because the fracture is deep mm -hmm. and the risks mm -hmm. are uh, significant. Mm -hmm. So I was wondering how you were thinking about that, given that you lead uh, one of the best schools of government in the world, one of the newest as well, but one of the ones uh, that is thinking very innovatively about these things. I think it is a challenge for all professional schools because we've spent a lot of, you know, the, for the last few decades, professional education has been about, you know, having a good grounding in economics, having a good grounding in law, having some good management skills. You certainly need all that, but to, to cope with the challenges that lie ahead. There's three things missing in that. And one is a really principled set of moral foundations for what you do, mm. which the public are crying out for from their leaders. The second is a real ability to listen and connect to people who are quite unlike yourself. So the challenge of diversity has to be right there. The ability to really listen to people who are not like you and not saying things that you expect them to say. And, um, and the third is to really learn to innovate, invigorate, you know, transform the institutions in which we work in a way that sustains them. And I think those things have been missing from professional schools, and we all now have to raise our game on that. Well, I, for one, am very glad that you're in this business and uh, thinking about these things, and we are as well. Um, thank you again for being here, for finding the time to come to Spain, and thank you all for watching this and uh, for your interest in the work that uh, we're doing uh, at, at IE and at various other wonderful places around the world. Bye-bye. Thank you.